Here we have steam entering well insulated turbine operating at steady state. So at the inlet, we're given the pressure, specific enthalpy, and the velocity. And then at the exit, we're also given the pressure, specific enthalpy, and the velocity. We're given the mass flow rate, and we're also told that potential energy can be neglected. P PE1 equals PE2. And we're looking for the power of this turbine in kilowatts. We know that we have no heat transfer because this is a well-insulated turbine. And then we have the enthalpies and velocities on either side. So with that being said, we're probably going to have to apply the first law of thermodynamics, which is the energy balance equation over this device. So we're going to have that zero equals the heat transfer minus the power plus the mass flow rate times basically what comes in minus what comes out. So you have the enthalpy at one minus the enthalpy at two plus the velocity at one squared minus the velocity at two squared divided by two. Just remember that this over here is essentially just the kinetic energy. And if you remember, the kinetic energy is uh, 1 over 2 mv squared. And now we need the potential energy, which is going to just be the mass flow rate times gravity times the change in height, which is z1 minus z2. And this is your entire energy balance equation over this turbine. Now, we're told that this is well insulated. So once again, we can cancel out our heat transfer. And then we're told that we're going to neglect potential energy, so we can go ahead and cross out the back end there as well. Now, if you just add W to both sides, you'll have that the power equals the mass flow rate times the change in enthalpy plus the change in velocity divided by 2, aka the kinetic energy. So now let's try to plug and chug what we have. So we'll have that the power equals 11.95 kilograms per second times the difference of enthalpy, which is 3015.4 minus 24, 31.7. Both of those are in kilojoules per kilogram. And to that, we're going to add the velocities. So we'll have 10 square or 10 meters per second squared minus V2, which is 90 meters per, and it's actually going to be meters squared per second squared because you'd square the units and divide that by two. Now, before we close off this right bracket here, we need to add a conversion factor for the velocity of 1 divided by 1,000. And the reason for that is that this unit here for your specific enthalpy is in kilojoules per kilogram. So you already have a kilo unit there. However, this unit here is meters squared per second squared, so you're actually missing the kilo unit. So to convert from a regular prefix into a kilo unit, you have to divide by 1,000. And the reason for that is because we're looking for our power here to be in kilowatts. We're not looking for it to be in watts. If we wanted it to be in watts, we would have to add a conversion factor to the specific enthalpy instead. So now we can close off our bracket and multiply across. And when you do, you'll have 69... 27.4. And just to prove to you that this is going to be in kilowatts, let's break down our units. So we're going to have a kilogram per second for the mass flow rate times the specific enthalpy, which is going to be kilojoules per kilogram. And if you multiply across, you'll have the kilo, uh, kilograms cancel out and you'll be left with a kilojoule per second, which is equal to a kilowatt. Now on the right side, you again have the mass flow rate of kilogram per second times meters squared per second squared. And if you multiply across, you're going to have a kilogram meter squared per second cubed. So let's break down that unit on the left of the kilo, uh, kilojoules per second. So remember that a joule is just a unit of work, which is just force times distance, which would just be a newton meter per second but we have that kilo as well which has to carry over so we have a kilo newton meter per second now a newton is just a kilogram meter per second squared just remember mass times acceleration and of course where you have to carry over that meter from above so we're going to have to square this and we're dividing by a second above so to carry that over we have to cube the bottom or the denominator here and we have to carry over that kilo as well. So we actually have a kilo kilogram meter squared per second cubed, which is very similar to the unit over here. However, notice that you're, you have a kilo here and here you do not. So all you have to do is divide by 1000. And when you do, you're going to have a kilo on this side as well. And then when you multiply across, you will in fact have 
a kilojoule per second or a kilowatt. So we have 69.27.4 kilowatts.